welcome to Fayette County Public Library Story Time. We're going to start today with the story, Why Apossumondas Has No Hair on His Tail. You see his tail? Yeah. No hair on his tail. But he does have a diaper. He does. <laughs> but I thought he no wear diapers. Apossumondas was swinging on the porch swing one day when Skunk came pussyfooting by. Hi, Apossumondas, said Skunk. Hi, Skunk, said Apossumondas. Skunk and Apossumondas were waving friends and play together friends. So they waved and Skunk pranced on by, swishing her thick black and white tail. Look at that nice tail. What do you think he's thinking? Look at his tail. He wants hair on him. And he probably does. Because he's thinking about his friend. The possum Mondas kept lollygagging there on the porch, thinking and swinging, swinging and thinking. He was thinking about tails. Skunks have thick black and white tails, he thought. And foxes have bushy red tails. And even hares have fluffy white powder puff tails. But my tail is just pink and naked and funny looking. <laughs> <clears throat> After a while, Apossumondas went inside to find his mama. Mama, why don't I have hair on my tail? He asked, climbing onto her lap. Well, honey, mama said, possums haven't always had naked tails. There's an old story. A long time ago, Papa Possum your great-great-grandpa had a fluffy little powder puff tail just like hair. All possums did in those days. Now Papa Possum was a mighty smart fellow. He could fool animals much bigger than he was just by playing dead. And oh, what a storyteller he was. But in spite of his smarts, sometimes he got himself in trouble. And this was one of those times. Papa Possum was sleeping peacefully in his cozy bed one morning when Rrr, Rrr, <laughs> Papa Possum got up. Who's that? Is that you? Stomach growling and groaning and kicking up a ruckus? <laughs> you are one hungry stomach. What's that you want? Persimmons, you say? Well, persimmons you'll get. <laughs> so Papa Possum headed down the road looking for persimmons. By and by, he ran across his friend Hare, and they started jabbering and confabbing. What are you up to, Hare? asked Papa Possum. Nothing now, said Hare. He looked tired. I've been working hard. Planting, watering, harvesting. Wish I had planted something, moaned Papa Possum. Stomach wishes it too. Hear that rumbling? He's craving persimmons. Persimmons, Hare said. Mmm, sounds good to me too. You know, Bear likes persimmons because they're sweet as honey. So he planted a whole mess of persimmon trees. Urgh. Now, Hare wasn't so good at climbing trees, but he sure was good at cooking up plans. He figured he could get himself some persimmons and get Papa Possum to do all the work. Why? I'm sure Bear would want you to have some, Papa Possum, Hare said. You can just climb up in the tallest tree and throw those persimmons right down to me. Then you take half and I'll take half. Deal? Before Hare finished speaking, Papa Possum lit out. Hare followed close behind. Soon, Papa Possum was perched on the highest branch in the highest tree, gobbling persimmon after persimmon. <laughs> what do you say now, Stomach? Papa Possum cried. Stomach was happy, and Papa Possum was happy too. 
Between bites, he sang at the top of his voice, Persimmon Simmons, high up in the tree, plenty enough for stomach and plenty enough for me. But Hare wasn't happy. Hey, Papa Possum, throw those persimmons down to me. He forgot to throw some down, didn't he? Yeah. <clears throat> Papa Possum threw one and gobbled three. And in between gobbling, he kept right on singing. Persimmon Simmons, high up in the tree. Plenty enough for stomach and plenty enough for me. Hare yelled loud, louder. Come on, Papa Possum, we made a deal. Papa Possum threw one and gobbled five. Then sang a little bit louder. Persimmon Simmons, high up in the tree. Plenty enough for stomach and plenty enough for me. Now Hare was mad. All those persimmons for Papa Possum and hardly any for me. He'll be sorry. And Hare hightailed it down the road. I think Papa's about to be in trouble. What do you think? Yeah. Who do you think he met on the road? Bear. <laughs> That's right. Bear was coming home. Hey, Bear, Hare called. You hear that singing? I think maybe there's someone in your persimmon patch. Then he skedaddled away. Bear stopped and listened and then took off growling and snarling. Ooh, I wouldn't want to be in Bear's tree right now, would you? No. Papa Possum was singing so loudly, he didn't even hear Bear coming. Bear shook the tallest tree, but Papa Possum just hung on tight and sang out, Three Simmons more and then I'll go. Bear shook harder, but Papa Possum hung on tighter and sang out, Two Simmons more and then I'll go. Then Bear gave that tray, tree a ferocious shake and Papa Possum hung on for dear life. Even then he sang, just one simmon more and then I'll go. Bear shook that tree so hard you would have thought the earth was going to fall apart. And finally down Papa Possum dropped, down, down, down in a shower of ripe persimmons. <clears throat> the instant Papa Pop Possum touched the ground, he got his feet going and bolted for the fence as fast as a racehorse. But Bear was fast too, and he got closer and closer. What do you think's going to happen? He bited his tail. <laughs> you were listening really well. Just as, oh, wait a minute. Stop, you possum picking possum. Persimmon picking possum. I'm going to teach you a thing or two, snarled Bear. Just as Papa Possum slipped through the rails of the fence, Bear chomped his teeth around that little powder puff tail, and he wasn't going to let go. No siree. <laughs> Look, Bear's got a mouth full of cotton. Bear pulled one way, Papa Possum pulled the other, and that fluffy little powder puff tail stretched. They pulled more, and it stretched more. Why, it was a tail tug of war. At last, pop, Papa Possum was free, so he kept right on going and going all the way home. And Bear, he was back there at the fence with a whole mouth full of hair. Believe it or not, his teeth had stripped that powder puff tail clean and stretched it into the longest and skinniest you've ever seen. <laughs> Stomach wasn't quite so fond of persimmons after that. And Papa Possum, he had lost that fluffy little powder puff tail. Now you might think that Papa Possum was kind of embarrassed about his tail. It was so pink and naked and funny looking. <laughs> but he always could make something good out of something bad. It turned out that tail came in pretty handy. Papa Possum found a million different ways to use it. Hanging from a branch, using it like a paintbrush. 
Getting Look at that! Kids. Getting the kids! Mm -hmm. Can't the and ever since then, Mama said, hugging her baby close, no possum has ever had hair on his tail, including you, my sweet little patootie. <laughs> His stomach's growling now. I wonder what he'll do. Do you think he'll go climb Bear's tree to get some persimmons like his great-great-grandpa? Yeah. Do you think he really will? Yeah. yeah. No, no, we'll just have to make up the end of the story ourselves, won't we? No, he's closing his eyes because that means he's getting sleepy. He might be getting sleepy. That is true. All right, Miss Lisa. All right, now we're going to play a little game of heads and tails. I've got some animal heads, and you girls have the tails. So we just had a story about how a tail got made on the opossum. So we're going to look at some other animals and the tails that they have. First of all, who can tell me what animal this is? A pig. Okay, look at your cards. Who's got the pig's tail? There it is. Go ahead and come make our little animal. He's got a cute little tail, doesn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He likes Now, what animal do I have here? A birdie. A bird. Who's got the bird's tail? Oh, I don't. I bet that's it right there. Can you come match it? Okay. Yeah, birds have feathers, don't they? Yeah. And they use their tail for flying. Look at that. It matches just good. Wonderful. Yay. Oh, look at this big critter. Who's got his tail? Uh, Do you have it? Which one is it? I think it's that one. <coughs> I think it's, it's half gray and half pink. What kind of tail does a hippo have? Uh, what would we call that? Just uh, a little stub of a tail, right? A flat tail? <laughs> a flat tail? <laughs> oh, look at this critter. He was in our story, too. What kind of tail does a bear have? Um, Go ahead and bring it up here. Does a tail? Does a bear have a big long tail yeah. like a possum? He does. Um, he doesn't even have a tail. No, he doesn't even have a tail, does he? No. He's an animal without one. Yeah. All right. What's this animal? A fox. Mm, look at those eyes, though. What's that? It's a fox. Raccoon. Let's say raccoon. Like Let, let's fox. get his tail. He's got a pretty tail, doesn't he? Raccoon's face and his tail sort of look alike, don't they? Black and white. Black and white. <laughs> Oh, we know this animal. What's it's that? Cow. Where's its tail? There we go. Yay. He's got a nice long tail, don't we? Oh, who's this guy? Elephant. All right, there's an elephant's tail. It's not very long either, is it? No. Here's another black and white animal. Who's this? Zebra. <gasps> yeah, come put that one up there. All right, matching those up. I only got a doggy tail. <gasps> you have a doggy? That's what's next. <laughs> You're right. Let's come put the doggy tail. I have a rabbit tail. You do? Let's see if it matches my head. Does a rabbit tail go right there? Yeah. So out of all these animals, which one has the longest tail? A doggy. The dog has a pretty long one, so does the... Raccoon. A raccoon. The rest of them are pretty short, though, aren't they? Wait, that bird has a long tail? Yep, he does sort of have a long tail. I don't know who's the longest. I don't, I, this one's touching the ground. I think oh, that's that the longest. Uh, that one's sticking I up. guess it depends on what kind of dog, because some dogs have short, some have long. Okay, mm -hmm. you guys ready for another story? Yeah. This is called Gumption. 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 Does it look like a jungle this morning? <clears throat> sort of looks like that. You guys like roller coasters? You've ever been on one? Yeah. Yeah? I went on a dragon one. You did? <gasps> well, this is Uncle Nigel. Uncle Nigel was Peter's favorite uncle. He was loud, and he was brave, and he was funny. And he always let Peter stay up late. You guys like to stay up late? Yeah. Yeah. So when Uncle Nigel invited Peter to join him on an expedition to Africa, there was no question what Peter was going to say. Would you go with your fun uncle to Africa? Yeah! Far, far away? Yeah. No? Well, on their very first morning at Wanabadoo Adventure Camp, 
Uncle Nigel said to Peter. I'm going to make a real explorer out of you, my boy. Today we are going to search for the rarest and wildest of beasts, the Zimbu Mountain Gorilla. Wow, cried Peter, the Zimbu Mountain Gorilla? Do you think we can find one? Uncle Nigel panted, patted Peter's head. You never know, lad. The jungle is full of surprises. Now, tally-ho, it is a good five miles up the mountain. That's a big climb, isn't it? Yeah. With long strides and swinging arms, Uncle Nigel led the way. Peter had to run to keep up with him. They came to a dense thicket. Uncle Nigel, I can't get through. Uncle Nigel winked. Nonsense, my boy. All it takes is a bit of gumption. He took out his hunting knife and hacked away through the big prickly leaves. There's his knife. He's hacking away. <laughs> Peter tried to follow. He's trying to follow his uncle's path, but what's getting him? A snake. He wrangled the snake, didn't he? Yeah. His uncle's all hot and sweaty, and he's up there playing with the snake. <laughs> uncle Nigel stopped in his tracks. Say, he cried, there's a snake skin. He tapped the tree. Hmm, there are snakes here somewhere, sly ones. Look out, Peter. Peter says, I promise I'll watch for snakes. <laughs> they got the snake skin down, don't they? Why? Well, snakes are sometimes dangerous. Soon they came to a sun-scorched plain. Uncle Nigel, Peter said, I'm hot. I need a rest. He's whining, isn't he? Uncle Ni Nigel smiled. Nonsense, my boy. All it takes is a bit of gumption. He took a long swig from his canteen and strode through the very tall grass. What's getting him now? Oh, oh my. <laughs> Peter tried to follow his uncle. His uncle's working hard to get through the grass. And where's Peter? On the elephant. <laughs> On the elephant. Look, and he made it all the way through the grass, and he gets to slide down his nose. <laughs> uncle Nigel stopped in his crack tracks. I say, I see some elephant dung. <laughs> <laughs> He lifted his binoculars and peered in every direction. Hmm, there are elephants here somewhere. Big ones. You better watch out, Peter. I will, said Peter. Had he already seen an elephant? Yeah. <laughs> then they came to a deep, deep river. Uncle Nigel, I can't cross that, said Peter. Uncle Nigel grinned. Oh, nonsense, my boy. All it takes is a bit of gumption. He took his life vest out and plunged into the dark, dark water. Now, how do you think the boy's going to get across? I don't know, because there's an alligator. Oh, is he going to help him? Yeah. Peter tried to follow. He stepped on the alligator. And he's, yep, he's jumping. Like Looks like he's trying to jump over him, but then he lands on his head. <gasps> He'll be and, mad. and there goes the uncle. He'll be mad. Uh, Uncle Nigel stopped in his tracks. I say, looky here. Oh, crocodile eggs. He dug at the ground with his boot. Hmm, there are crocs here somewhere. Hungry ones. Better stay close to me, Peter. I will, Peter said. At last they were deep in the heart of the jungle and they began to climb up the long mountain. The ground was rocky and steep. Uncle Nigel, I can't climb all the way to the top. Uncle Nigel laughed. Oh, nonsense, my boy. All it takes is a bit of gumption. He took his rope from his backpack and threw it over the tree branch, and he pulled himself up the big slope. How's Peter going to get up there? I don't know. There's a gorilla. There is the gorilla. Peter tried to follow. But, but he, the gorilla's helping. He got on the gorilla's back. Is yeah. he going to beat his uncle to the top? Uh -huh. Sure looks like it. Looks like the gorilla's having fun. Uncle Nigel stopped in his tracks. I say, there's footprints. That's an ace, lad. The footprints of the Zimbu mountain gorilla. Wow, said Peter. Uncle Nigel tapped on a tree. He lifted his binoculars and peered in every direction. He dug into the ground with his boot. He's looking everywhere, but... Behind him, right? Because the gorilla's right there. Uh -huh. <laughs> then he shook his head. Hmm, nothing. I expect we gave it a fright. 
Uncle Nigel! Now don't worry, Peter. Just think, we're standing right here in the home of the rarest and wildest of beasts. The Zimbu Mountain Gorilla, said Peter. Uncle Nigel sighed. I'm sorry we didn't get to see one, my boy. But that's what you learn when you're a real explorer. You might not find what you're after. But it's always worth the trip. The crocodile. He looked at Peter. Are you disappointed, my lad? Oh, no, Uncle Nigel. The jungle is amazing. That's the spirit. Are you zonked? Do you need a break? It's a good five miles back to camp. Oh, no, Uncle Nigel. I can do it, Peter grinned. All it takes is a bit of gumption. Uncle Nigel thumped Peter on his shoulder. Jolly old good, Peter. Down the mountain we go. And don't worry, old sport. We can try it again tomorrow. Now, why isn't Peter all tired out? Because he's on... All the he got help with all the animals, <laughs> didn't he? The uncle's doing all the hard work. That was a great story. That's called gumption. Mm. Mm. Do you have gumption? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we got another possum story. It says, don't laugh, Joe. <laughs> oh, you're laughing already. It says, oh, don't dear. laugh. <laughs> Mother Possum dearly loved her little son, Joe, but he was always giggling. Lately, his giggling made her worry. Mother Possum was about to teach Joe the most important lesson a possum can learn. Do you <laughs> know what the laughing. most important lesson is for a possum? What? What? Not laughing. You don't know what it is? No. Oh, I think Mama's going to tell us. Joe, said Mother Possum, you must learn how to play dead. Why? asked Joe. Because we possums escape our enemies by playing dead. Mother Possum explained. When you learn this trick, Joe, I'll bake you the possum's favorite dessert. A bug pie. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be our favorite dessert, but it might be for a possum. Yeah. 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 No, they like started this. to practice. No giggling, Joe, Mother Possum warned. No problem, Mom, Joe answered. Joe played dead, and his mother sniffed his fur like a hungry fox. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Joe laughed so hard that his stomach hurt. Can I have my pie now, he asked. <laughs> no way, Joe, Mother Possum scolded. Dead possums don't laugh. <laughs> Somebody is staring out the window. Joe practiced playing dead again. This time his mother poked him with a nasty coyote. Poke, poke, poke. Joe laughed so hard that he screamed for her to stop. Can I have my pie now, he asked. No way, Joe, Mother possum scolded. Dead possums don't scream. <laughs> Joe practiced playing dead once more. This time his mother shook him like a scary wildcat. Shake, shake, shake. Joe laughed so hard that he wiggled loose and fell on the floor. <laughs> How about some bug pie, Mom? he asked. <laughs> no way, Joe, Mother Possum scolded. Dead possums don't wiggle. <laughs> you bug dead. I wonder what all these people are thinking, or these animals are thinking, looking in the window. <laughs> you dead. <laughs> dead. Joe's mother was worried about his laughing, but his friends loved it. They liked to watch Joe play dead because he made them laugh too. But Joe, Mother Possum said, sighing, what will you do when real danger comes? Play dead. Mm -hmm. Play dead. Mm -hmm. One day, Mother Possum took Joe outside to practice. This time, she said, I will be a grumpy old bear. When I growl at you, you play dead. Okay, Joe? Nothing to it, Mom, Joe said. But just as Mother Possum was about to growl. Did you see that back there? A real grumpy old bear came out of the woods. 
He let out the fiercest growl Joel had ever heard. Joe and his mother immediately fell to the ground to play dead. <laughs> you think Joe will be okay? Yeah, he played no. The grumpy old bear sniffed Joe's fur. Sniff, sniff, sniff. The grumpy old bear poked Joe's tummy. Poke, poke, poke. He stayed there. Finally, the grumpy old bear shook Joe up and down. Shake, shake, shake. Which one you like him up? Joe didn't laugh. Joe didn't scream. And Joe didn't wiggle. For the first time, he played dead perfectly. Mother Possum was very proud of him. But the grumpy old bear wouldn't go away. He sat and sat and sat. Suddenly, the bear started to cry. Great big tears. This is terrible, he moaned. I'm always so grumpy. I thought if anyone could make me laugh, it would be little Joe the possum. But when I find him, poor Joe drops dead before my eyes. Oh, this is awful. <laughs> When he heard the bear's story, Joe was relieved. He even began to feel sorry for the sobbing bear. Hey, Mr. Bear, he called. I'm not dead. I was just playing dead. The bear was so surprised he almost jumped out of his fur. <laughs> playing dead, he cried. Boy, you're good at that. Oh, please, Joe, he begged. Teach me how to laugh. <laughs> It's easy, said Joe. Lots of things are funny, Mr. Bear. What happened just now is funny, and he started to giggle. Soon his laughter spread to everyone around him, even the grumpy old bear. Look, he's got a big smile on his face. I think maybe he's going to laugh. Look at him. Before long, the animals were laughing so hard that the whole forest shook. Oh, Joe, the bear howled. Thank you for teaching me to laugh. Thank you, Mr. Bear, Joe answered, for teaching me how to play dead. <laughs> now, can I have my pie? Joe asked his mother. Absolutely, Mother Possum answered. Everyone, please come and join us for some delicious bug pie. Yeah. With grasshoppers, Joe shouted yeah. gleefully, and beetles, and yummy cockroaches, too. Yeah. The other animals suddenly stopped their giggling. Bug pie? Cockroaches? One by one, they fell to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and played dead. <laughs> Even the bear. <laughs> okay, well, we're glad you joined us today. Thank you for listening to some wonderful stories. And please come and visit us at the Fayette County Public Library. But for right now, we need to say... Stand up. And wave at the camera. Over that way. Goodbye! Say bye! bye. <laughs>